Hello, everybody. Uh, kind of an impromptu video, I have to say. And Manscaped. Look at that. Got some uh, votes. Votes. So as you know, um, we've been on the on the lookout for a new manager of the Burning Drugs. And um, what I did was I sent a, an email out to let the faction vote on uh, on who would they want as their new manager with names and stuff of that floating around and and uh and they did some people have made a a, a claim for that title i think everybody knows that brandon hannah has been very very um vocal about wanting to be the new manager of the droogs and and so his name was was put on there with the rest of the uh with the rest of the faction and they voted they all voted together um there's one person i didn't get their vote and it's and i said i needed to get all their votes before we actually did a a, a vote here in general so i was able to finally get this um this uh individual here to get the the vote full on uh, you know him he, he, he used to love him. He is the pit boss, Ken Napson. Hello, Ken. How are you, uh, old friend of mine? It's great. Okay. It's great. Hey, buddy. Thanks How's for that. Good. How yeah. you doing? You recovered from that uh, that uh, that match or what? Did you wake up yet? Uh, yeah. Look. Um, yeah. PJ and I have had some words behind the scenes. Oh, some of those okay. questions, but uh, it's fine. You move on. Move on. Uh, any before we get into what we're here today, any words on uh, on Andres Cabrera winning the whole thing? You know, I'm proud of that guy. You I know, know, I love that guy. I knew, like I nothing away from Di Melanta. What a match! It was great. And you you had like eleven thousand people watching great. Ace ascend to the top or or nearly the top. I, I yeah. like that kid. Like it was that. and look, and I I know that we we've we've been talking here about uh you, your involvement and things that you've been doing and and whatnot. You were able to compete and um. I uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, you didn't respond to any of my emails, so thank you for that. Or nor texts um, about the the Droogs are looking for a new manager. The votes have uh, are in. However, there is one person who has not voted. You want to take a guess on on who that was? Oh, that's that's uh, that's got to be Makuga. He doesn't he doesn't pay attention either, right? Well, he's on he's on swag. Um, he's on so, swag. He's you know, on help swag? You, yeah, I'll help you out. It, it was you. You didn't vote. Oh. Yeah, you didn't did vote. you send? Did you send? You sent it to my hotmail. I send it every. I sent it. I sent an email to your house, uh, an actual email to your house. I sent a letter, letter to your house. I, I have a smart um, house. I have a smart house. There's yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, good. There's a lot of stuff that I did um, okay. to get it. So I need you to give me a vote right now, so I can tally that up and figure out who the. Uh, you don't have to write it down. You just tell me at this point. Does spelling, I, does spelling count though? If I, if you, it depends okay. if you end it with an M or an N. Great. Um, Tiffany, Tiffany Smith. Not on swag, not eligible. Um, I would, I would say maybe someone more around the circle, something along those lines. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To, um, like someone from like the the yeah, someone around, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Oh, def, uh, then uh, Catherine Reitman. She's she was a great co-host. Uh, no, definitely uh, Catherine's uh, very busy on her Netflix show, working moms. Uh, not involved in the schmodown. Uh, I would say maybe really? keep it in. The, yeah, maybe keep it around the you know your circle of, of people, or maybe not even your circle, people that are on your faction, or maybe around that area. Who's on my Who's on my team? Let me check the roster here. I got no. I, I got it up. I got it up. I I go to frankjanish.blog.com. Yeah. Uh, I like this guy. I like his beard. Warfather. Can we vote Warfather? That's your official vote. You're gonna say you're gonna say Warfather is the official vote for Ken Napsock to run the Drew. Warfather. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna write that down. I like, I like him. He's All right. Like, like so look, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you right now. Mm -hmm. I have the official. Uh, manager of the Jukes. Would you like to? Would you like me to tell you who that is now, or do you want to? You want to find out like everybody else? No, I mean clearly my vote has like way, sway, right? Not swag, what? but sway. It so it was a, it was a, it was a close remember, race. Remember sway from MTV race. News? He was good. It was a, uh, yeah, it, it, it's Warfather, right? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the new manager of the Burning Drugs, starting with tomorrow's match. Brandon Hanna and Alex Damon is the pit boss. Ken Knapsack is the manager of the Drews. Ken, congratulations. Your faction has voted you in. You are the new manager. Wait a minute. That, yeah. Come on. What? Is, You're what the manager gotta, of the Drews. What do I got to do? You got to manage the Drews. You're a baseball guy. Manage a team and take them to a championship like the 86 Mets. I'm not. Do you think I'm as 
unattractive as Davy Johnson? Is that what yeah. you're telling me? I'm all oh, I'm more of a Jim Jim Leland. All right, look, I don't know. Can I turn? I can turn it down, right? I, I can just say you get paid extra. Oh, I'm definitely okay. I'm I'm listening. Yeah, great. This but this isn't going to be like when you told me to produce the schmoes. No, right? This is. Well, it depends. I mean, you got to deal with Brandon Hannon and all those people. What I will say is, it's for the for the remainder of the season. You are the interim manager for the remainder of the season. Uh, you are the interim manager. Uh, listen, listen. You have yeah. taken people to championships before. Mike Kalinowski was under your uh, reign when when he took both the teams and the and the interim championships. So you you have you have experience. So okay. uh, so you are now the manager of the Drugs, and your first match is tomorrow. Brandon Hanna, and. Mr. Alex Damon. Once again, you get to see Alex Damon. I like that kid. Can yeah. I? All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to slide. I wrote down a rate. I'm going to slide it across to you Let me over, see the, it. over the desk. And you, you tell me if that, uh, if that works, uh, works for me. You're in. Right. Let's do it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the new manager of the burning droogs, the pit boss, Ken Knapsack, starting with tomorrow's match. Ken, I know you're ecstatic about it. Uh, your your faction has voted you. And I will say there was a, a few people, one notably who did not vote for you. And this person voted for themselves. And I won't have to say who that is. All right. We will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much. Welcome back, movie trivia showdown fans. This is the Inner Geekdom Tournament. It is the second round, and this match is one of the most highly anticipated matches we have had in a long time in the Inner Geekdom division. We have Brandon, the Hitman Hannah, versus Alex, the Demon Damon. My goodness, Mark, this is something. Oh, Christian, you know, I, you hate to say it's as simple as good versus evil, but if their, you know, behavior recently has to be believed, then you can make it that distinction because Alex Damon is so easy to root for. He's run through the Star Wars division so many times. He's trying his hand at Inner Geekdom, and he looks formidable in that as well. And then you have Brandon Hanna. What happened to the kid who, it, just a mere couple of years ago, went to a show I did at a college. He wasn't even a student there. He just wanted to come meet me and take a picture, and he was a pleasant young lad. Since then, all downhill. I think he's more machine now than man. Yeah, he's a lot has happened with Brandon Hanna. He is he is three and two. He did beat Saul. He took that victory. He's he, good. He got that victory against the Den. He's very happy about that. But the guy just can't stay happy because what happens? The Droogs are looking to for a new manager. Brandon Hanna comes. Oh, I'm going to manage, and I manage Ken Napsock in, in Star Wars CEO. I did, and then the Droogs voted in that Ken Napsock would be the interim manager. I don't know. It seems like him and Ken are on the same page now, but is that going to affect him? Then you go to the flip side. You got Roxy Stryer and Alex Damon. Roxy Stryer acknowledges how much Alex Damon has done for her faction this year. He has a lot of the points this year. He beat Emily Rose Jacobson in Atlanta. He beat Jen Kemp in the first round. He is a dominant Star Wars champion. He's getting better and better in the inner geekdom division. He is becoming her, uh, her kind of golden goose right now. So, this is everything for Roxy. She doesn't have anybody left at the, at the moment, so this is a big match for her and the rock stars. That's right. It's tough when you get the metaphors because he clearly is her golden goose, but when a lay, you know, you lay an egg or an egg is laid, it's not always a good thing in sports. Yeah. So this is going to be such an intense battle. I mean, Christian, when you just look at it on the playing surface, I have not seen a weakness in Brandon Hanna's game yet. Alex Damon, he knows a lot of things about most of the wedges on the wheel, and he's proved that in the most harrowing of settings. I mean, he did it at a live match, albeit in his hometown of Atlanta. So how will they fare here today in it's, uh, more of a neutral site? I think it's fair to say the internet is, although yeah. if the internet was to be asked, I think most of them would be pulling for Alex Damon. Well, yeah. I mean, especially after Brandon Hanna hasn't shut his mouth in, in over a month. And he yeah. keeps talking and he keeps talking and he keeps talking. He did it against Saul and he's certainly been going after the beloved champion in Alex Damon. He's been going after him. Damon's fired back on social media. They've Damon's not one of those people who's just going to sit there, but he'll fire back in the classy way that Damon does. 
But Hannah puts out his videos and and that's why we're here today. Roxy fired back on behalf of Damon. This has been a battle of words, but is it going to be a battle of knowledge? And you want to see how we got here and everything that's been going down? Here you go. I'm going to burn the place to the ground, starting with all the people, everyone, who are the real jokes of this league. There were stakes. Yeah. This was Brandon Hanna's career on the line. Those losses to Chandru, not good. I felt the pressure of the match. So I know Brandon Hanna had to feel the pressure of the match. So he knew if he were to talk all this smack, all this talk, cause all this consternation, that if he loses, oh my gosh, does he look like the biggest idiot in the world. Hi. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon the Hitman. Hannah. You didn't think I'd go anywhere, did you? No. Of course I'm back. Brandon Hanna. There's something about him right now. It's like a car crash. You can't stop but watch it. It's like, it, what? what's he going to say next? Who's he going to go after next? What bridge is he going to burn next? It seems like some people are in this league just to cause drama and make a name for themselves regardless of skill. And I do know that Brandon Hanna has the skill. I've seen his accuracy rating. The accuracy thing is real. He's a scary oh, player. Sure. Brandon Absolutely. Brandon knows what no he's doubt. doing, and I, I can't sit here and disparage him because of his attitude so much that I can say, I think you've got your work cut out for you, Alex. Oh, demon, prepare to go down in flames because you will suffer the same exact fate as those who came before you. I just don't get it. It's movie trivia, man. It's supposed to be fun. It would be fun to play Alex Damon only to shut up all the idiot fans who think he's gonna somehow take this tournament. Alex Damon is a champion. You really think, honey, that's who you should be taking a shot at? I'm a, I'm a Star Wars YouTuber. I get yelled at all the time. It doesn't really phase me. <laughs> I'm just... Uh... When I beat you, will Molly run in and give you a high five for lasting two rounds with me? Because that's all it's going to be. Ask Andrew Guy, Mike Kalinowski, when they talk and talk and talk, but you win, people start to listen. Alex is a Star Wars champion, but that's all he really is, a Star Wars champion. Yeah, it's going to take a perfect storm for that idiot to beat me. So, wow. Batten down the hatches, buddy. The storm's coming. Fired up, Mark. I'm pumped up. It. I mean, there is a lot of smack talk. But Brandon Hanna is. He, look, he talked a lot of smack in that last match against Saul, and people said, "Well, you better back it up." And he backed it up in a really great match, by the way. Yeah. Look now, Brandon, who was a sweet boy one time in his life. I, he at least I can give him this credit that he's really good at talking trash. I mean, I mean, he knows his way around smack talk. But to Alex Damon's credit, he doesn't look all that phased by it yet. But once you get into the heat of competition, does any of that enter the back of your brain? Maybe you miss a question that you thought you had. Does the doubt start to creep in? We're about to find out because it's all going down right now. All right. So before we get into it, like we mentioned, here are the standings at the moment. You see where the rock stars are. You see where the droogs are. And to bring in, to talk about just that, the manager of the rock stars, Roxy Stryer, and the interim manager of the droogs, the pit boss, Ken Nabsock. All right, let's start with you, Ken. Uh, look, you were shocked by the decision of your faction mates to take over this faction, but yet here you are. With Brandon Hanna, how are you feeling about this match? Yeah, here I am, Chairman. I'm always here for you. Don't forget that. Don't forget that, Chairman. You call. I wait till at least five times before I answer, but eventually I do. So I'm here, and I don't want to manage. But, you know, 
I, I like this kid, Brandon Hanna. I, I remember when I thought his name was Bryce and used to get me the coffee when I was doing the inside showdowns and he'd press play on the camera. Uh, he was a good kid. And now to see where he's come, to see where, see where he's going, this is a great match. I'm excited. I, Alex, you know I love Alex Damon. The Damon, he's a good kid. He's a good guy. And, and, I, and, and I look... Uh, we know his Star Wars knowledge, but I think he's not focused. I think he's rooting for his wife more than rooting for himself right now. And Brandon Hanna is, is coming off a match. And I don't know why people were supporting Saul, who looks like a guy who runs an unlicensed hot dog cart in Times Square. Why would you even root for that guy? But uh, Hanna proved himself there. But I know people. I know people. They want always the next big thing. This is the next big thing. So I'm here, and I'm in Hanna's corner, and he's going to get it. Don't you forget it. Blink, right. blink. All right, all right, Roxy Stryer. Um, look, you hear Ken? Ken is uh, is now on the opposite side here. This is a big thing. You've been here since the beginning, managing. How are you feeling? I have been here from the beginning, so uh, I guess welcome to the table right now, Ken. Uh, you're right. Everybody does love Alex Damon. He is the most loved person possibly in the Schmodown, and for good reason. Uh, I don't know on what grounds you think he's not focused. This is literally all he does and i think it takes a pretty great man to support his wife so i'm not even going to be angry about that uh, but at the end of the day he is the champion for a reason and yeah christian you said it earlier but brandon and hannah does keep talking and talking and talking and oh my god at first he was taking shots and i was here for it but now he just won't shut up yeah, he's gone after you on social media. He's gone oh after. Oh my god, you. he doesn't even know who he's playing with anymore. Yeah, you responded to him. You posted a video about it. But Mark, I know you, you had something you wanted to ask. Yeah, I mean, because you have all this preamble and you have all this hype, but once you actually get in the ring, it's a question of how much do you actually believe in your competitor. And so, Roxy, I'll start with you and then go to Ken. Is any of this talk, any of this hoopla going to get in the head of your competitor? Is that something that you as a manager genuinely worry about? Zero percent when it comes to Alex Damon. I do have players where talk gets to them. And, you know, they, they'll get riled up. And part of my job as a manager is to come in and make sure that they're not letting those outside voices take over. Not when it comes to Alex Damon. He's like the Yoda of inner geekdom. Uh, he just is so zen, is so powerful. You can see it when he plays the game. I've never seen him phased. The only thing he doesn't like, and it has nothing to do with other competitors, is missing a question. It's the only thing that bothers him. Okay, but Ken, I mean, we see, you know, that wolf and the three little pigs. You huff, you puff, you try to blow a house down. Eventually, you get tired, you get winded. Is that going to happen to Hannah here today? First of all, Roxy says, welcome to the table. I'm one of the people that built this table. You're welcome to be here. All right. How are those splinters oh, doing? Uh, I don't, I wear gloves. Second thing about that, Alex is like Yoda. Yoda was great. Yoda was the best Jedi of all time. But what does Yoda, what does Yoda say? Failure is the best teacher. Yoda failed. Yoda failed a lot. Alex Damon, you're about to hit that failure point. And to your question, Mark, no, nah, Hannah can huff. He can puff. That's part of what fuels him. You know those players. You know those Richard Sherman players on the line there waiting for the snap, just talking mad beep, until the ball is hiked, and it fuels them. That's what we got here. All right, well, listen, both you guys, this is going to be anticipated. Hannah versus Damon. Big match for both factions here, too. Thank you to Ken. I'm going to put you in the waiting room there. And Roxy, as we get ready, uh, man, yeah. this, uh, this is something. How's your is, – is this just my apartment? Because it feels like it just got 20 degrees hotter in here. Is my AC on the fritz, or is that just the temperature in this virtual room that we're about to enter? Well, we're going to find out in just a moment. Mark, you ready to get going? Yeah, let Foggy fix his hair a little bit. It's not a wig, folks. It's as good as it's going to get. Christian, do the honors. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Three rounds in the inner geekdom division quarterfinals. Introducing first, representing the rock stars with a record of two wins no defeats he is the reigning movie trivia schmodown star wars champion of the world alex the demon 
Damon! Oh, I'm sorry. I'll do that later. <laughs> what are you doing there? Alex, the demon. Damon, Alex, you you just can't lose, my friend. You have won two already in a row in Inner Geekdom. You have, uh, obviously, the most dominant Star Wars champion we've seen. You made it to the quarterfinals here against Brandon Hanna. He has not been shy in calling you out, talking about how you are out of your league, um, how this is the end of the road for you. You've shot back at him. How do you feel about Hanna and everything he's been saying? I mean, I'm not really here to beat Hanna. I don't have anything to prove to him. I'm, I'm just here to prove to myself that I know more than just Star Wars. And I mean, there's obviously been some gaps in my knowledge in the past, but I've overcome them. And in between every single match, I am filling in those gaps. And uh, I, I think that there is another wheel slice uh, this match that I can check off the list as another sure thing. Well, Alex, once again, you've come to play, my friend, and you've come dressed to impress. I'd like to go shopping with you at some point during my next trip to the Southeast. But when we look at this match, I always ask you about Star Wars and how that factors in. Is there another movie property within the realm of the inner geekdom that you can look at and take some sort of advice, some sort of motivation from going into this match? Oh, uh, I guess I would have to go with Middle Earth. I mean, it's one of my other great loves. I think I proved that in the exhibition match. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's got some very similar values to Star Wars and uh, just that perseverance and never giving up, overcoming obstacles. And that's what I'm going to do today. All right. So the great Alex, the Demon Damon, thank you. We're going to put you in the waiting room here as we wait for your opponent and his opponent. Representing the Burning Druids with a record of three wins, two defeats, and one knockout. Brandon the Hitman Hannah. Look at that smug look. Look at you. Look at you. Are you? Uh, you got a big smile on your face. You are. You've been. You've been nothing. You have not been quiet, my friend. As I see, you've been taking shots at Alex Dean. You said you don't have respect. For him. He's the longest reigning champion we've ever had. How do you not have respect for Alex Dean? Listen, it's fine. It's cute that he's a champion in all where he only has to focus on one specific franchise of movies. I mean, <laughs> we're talking about a Star Wars champion here that missed a round one Star Wars question in Atlanta. <laughs> I mean, you expect me to be afraid of this guy? No, are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude, I'm, it's great that he has two wins, by the way, against two subpar, very unproven competitors. <laughs> I mean, uh, come on. Like, this is this is a joke. I'm just here to move on to the next round. Uh, uh, Brandon, I know in, in the midst of your tirade and your verbal outrage at pretty much everybody else involved in the Shmodan, you haven't had a lot of time to consider this option. But if you do go on to win, have you thought about where in your room you're going to put that belt? Where are you going to decorate? What is what is it going to look like to have this inner geekdom eventual championship, not just this tournament, but the whole thing in your humble abode? I mean... I honestly don't really care. The belt is a nice, uh, you know, I guess prop that I could put up somewhere like Kevin Smets like to do, likes to do in the back of his videos. But at the end of the day, it's just all about burning the whole damn place to the ground. And if I happen to win a championship at the end of it, so be it. But I mean, let's be honest, it's it's just an accessory. I can't reach this kid, Christian. I don't think anybody can. All right, well, if that's, if that's it, then I will bring in Mr. Alex Damon here, Brandon. You're all good. Well, no, you know what? I I, I don't I don't think that's it at all. Um, could you could you bring Ken on for a moment, actually? You're you're all right. Your interim manager. Well, we usually yeah bring, yeah. My, you want to talk to him now? My, my interim manager. Yeah. Could you bring him in now? All, all right. right. Here's here's Hi, Ken. Ken. Anna. You know, Hi, I think bro. I think uh, you know, I I really feel like I've. Let's be honest. I'm I'm pretty great, and I uh, I've proven myself not just as a competitor, but as a manager as well. And Ken, <laughs> I don't I don't think I need you here at all. I mean, what what qualifies you to be here again? Running corruption into the ground. So if you don't mind, I'd like to manage myself for the rest of this wait, match. You don't want so you you don't wait, you don't want Ken you No you don't I don't mean here. You you wanna call the shots yourself, even though 
Uh, and look, I didn't want this. I didn't want this. Uh, I, but the Droogs, they, they cast a vote. They picked a, a broken stick or some marbles. They played pickup sticks. They did something. You were there. And and the, I, I won. So you, well, that's, you don't... That's, not, so that's wait, something we have in common, Ken. We both don't want this. I think uh, the Droogs, well, they made a piss poor decision. Wow. So what, what, do, what do we do here, Ken? Well, I mean, look, first of all, he's flaunting Please. his... He's he's flaunting his uh, you know his middle finger to, to democracy. This is how liberty dies, I guess. Um, but I, you know what? I like his moxie, Chairman. Look at that bed behind him. That's Chris C- Corners. I trust a kid like that. That's a kid who's prepared. So you know what? There, Hannah. I'll say to you now, look, just like that day that you grabbed my coffee uh, and brought it over right before I went to uh, tape and in such mode, and I said, "Hey, you put that lid on a little crooked, but I still like you." Hannah, this is yours. I got stuff to deal with. I'm out. Whoa, Ken is out. Uh, all right, you, so you're, you you have no so you're gonna manage yourself is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm gonna manage myself. I don't need that clown holding me back. Okay, well, good start I, there. Let's bring in Alex Damon. Um, as we see, right, drama starting right away between Brandon Hannah and Ken Napsack, who is the interim manager and will still get paid for this match. Um, so. All right, Alex, sorry for the drama there. Um, and Roxy wants to let you know that your sheets are wrinkled. So that's uh, that's just something. Good one. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, Mark, the competitors are here finally. Uh, round number one, how does it go? Oh, thank God. We finally get to rules. Here are the rules for round number one. In the inner geekdom, there's 10 questions from 10 different corners of good old-fashioned nerdy know-how. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever utensil and tablet you prefer to utilize. Once we ask you by name, please show what you wrote to your microphone and the same time you verbalize it into your camera or switch it around, whatever works for you. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point by your manager or you if you are your own manager throughout the duration of the three-round match. Christian, it's even getting to the rules reader what's going on right now. It's a little strange, but nothing that Brandon Hanna has done this season has been normal. So, all right, we are ready to go here. We start with Alex. Are you ready? Man, finally, I'm just here to answer questions. I don't know what to do with all this drama. Brandon Hanna, are you ready? I'm just here to answer questions too, Christian. Then let's get ready to schmodown. All right, guys, round number one, question number one. Here is your first. In Black Panther, T'Challa confronts Claw in a casino in which country? Uh, uh, Mr. Harloff, are we just here to ask the questions? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like our whole job has been diminished severely. What? And hands up afterwards, please. Five, four, three, two, one. We start with Alex Damon, please. South Korea. That is correct. Brandon Hanna. That would be South Korea. Yes, it is. Okay. Question number two. A great scene, too. Uh, your next category is Star Wars. Yeah. Your question. In The Phantom Menace, what is the name of the reigning pod race champion who has a rivalry with Anakin? Ah, now this is what I call Schmodowning. Is it Jason Gedrick? <laughs> the answer is Kaniki from Five, Greece. Four, three, two, one. One pens down, Brandon Hanna. That would be Sebulba. Yeah, Alex, if you get this wrong, you have to hand in your Star Wars champion. Yeah. <laughs> Sebulba. That, that is correct. All right. Next uh, next question here is question number three. Middle Earth. Middle Earth. In the return of the king, who becomes the steward of Gondor in the wake of Denethor's death? Uh, Christian, you're a scores and soundtrack guy. Give us some some Lord of the Rings music for the kids. La 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 You went with Laws. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Alex Damon. Faramir. Yes, sir. And Brandon. Faramir. Yep. So three, three. Next question. 
And we lottied our way over to the world of DC, <laughs> DC movies. And your question, what DC film features the tagline, hell wants him, heaven won't take him, earth needs him? Yeah, sounds a little bit like Brandon Hanna, huh, Christian? Yeah. Except that last part. Well, let's see. If... <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Brandon Hanna. Constantine? Yes, it is. Alex? Constantine. We have ourselves a tie game here. 4-4 four, four, as we get to the next question, which is question number five, and it is in the realm of Marvel. Marvel. Who played General Thunderbolt Ross in 2003's Hulk? You think, uh, you think Thunderbolt's on the birth certificate? Should be. <laughs> Certainly an upgrade from whatever the name was. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Alex? Sam Elliott. Yes, it is. Brandon? Sam Elliott. Right now, the score is 5-5, five, five, and it is a scrap back and forth as we are halfway through round number one, Marcus Aurelius Ellis. That is right, Christian. And as we continue on, I'll remind the competitors and everybody out there watching and their one manager between the two of them that if they continue on this perfect pace, a bonus question will be asked. It's also worth the point. We're not there yet. Where we are is the wizarding world. Oh, that 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 guy. Your question. Who voices Narlac, a goblin gangster who owns a magical speakeasy in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? Uh, me and Sam Elliott uh, were hanging out at the Burbank Airport together one time, Christian. Is that true? Super nice guy. The mustache up close. It's like you just want to take a nap in it. Four. Like a hammock. Three, two, one. Pens down. Brandon Hanna? That would be Ron Perlman. Yes, it is. Alex? I didn't have it. Warwick Davis. Didn't have it on that one. All right. So Alex misses his first one. Hannah's still perfect as we have a six to five round here in the first round. Next question. Question number seven. Star Trek. Name one of the original crew members besides Kirk that cameos in Star Trek Generations. You ever see any of these in the theater besides the uh, the, the JJ ones? I want to tell you that I saw Khan when I was really little and didn't understand it because yeah. I was really little. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Alex Damon. Scotty. Yes. And Brandon. Scotty. Yep. Brandon Hanna. Still perfect here as we see seven to six. Alex Damon only missing one, but still one point is the lead by the hitman. And we continue on. That one point lead could turn to two if he remains perfect and gets that bonus question asked just to him. Where we are right now is the DCEU. And the question, in the film Suicide Squad, who receives an espresso machine as a reward for completing Amanda Waller's mission? Answer Ralph Biscuits. I, uh, are you still infatuated with all those fancy coffee machines, Christian? I know you went nuts with Keurigs. I still have Keurigs, yeah. Five. At your place? Four, yeah. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Brandon Hanna. Harley Quinn. Yep. And Alex? Harley Quinn. There we go. Eight and seven. That's the score. Nine. Question nine. Heroes and villains. Which DC villain says prison is a creepy place, Kitty, and one needs to make creepy friends in order to survive? I, it's not the worst piece of advice I've ever heard. No. Someone who's been locked up many times myself. That's false. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, guys. Hands up. Pens down, hands up. And I don't, Alex, I, no? I don't have it. Brandon? I just guessed Joker. Looking for Lex Luthor. Lex <sighs> Luthor. So Brandon Hanna misses his first one. We still see ourselves with a one-point game, but the extra point is now not available as we see eight to seven. The next question is the final question in this round, Mark. Yes, it is, Christian, and wrap those sleeves up because we're reaching our hands deep into a mixed bag. It's the name of the category. And the question therein, who plays the villainous Benjamin Chudnovsky, who also goes by Bloodnovsky in The Green Hornet? 
Uh, I think I enjoyed this movie, right? Did we both like this? Nah, I think you liked it more than I did. You know why? Because uh, I Can't Wait to Feel Your Love Tonight by Van Five, Halen is in the song. Four. Is in the movie. Three, two, one. Pens down and Hannah. Uh, I don't have it, but I would like to challenge the question. You can challenge it in a second. Let's see. Uh, Alex? Christoph Waltz? That is correct. What's the challenge, Brandon? I would not consider the Green Hornet and Inner Geek the movie. It's not based off of a comic book of any kind. It was a radio show at first that then had comic adaptations later on. And I feel like if we can accept Green Hornet as a comic book movie, where do we draw the line? Evil Dead, Transformers, Alien versus Predator. I mean, it's it's right, a really challenge, blurry challenge, line there. All right, your challenge is that it's not an Inner Geekdom. It's film. not an Inner Geekdom film. All right, we're gonna call. We're gonna call PJ. I'm gonna call Mark, and we will. Uh, Call you right. Well, let's see that graphic. All right, and we're back. And after a ruling, we have a decision. Marcus Aurelius. We're back, and we have the combination. After consulting between Christian and myself, as well as writer PJ Campbell, we have come up with the determination that the challenge will be overruled, and the reason is because the Green Hornet, maybe based radio, comic, what have you, it was not asked under a comic book movie banner like a DC or a Marvel, it was asked in Mixed Bag, where you also might have an Indiana Jones or a Back to the Future question. So Green Hornet uh, was on the list that all competitors received prior to this season beginning uh, as a possible movie that could have a question be asked. So therefore the challenge is overruled and we will continue on with the match. Uh, Alex Damon is awarded a point. And now I believe, Christian, we are tied. We have a tie game. It is eight to eight. And we see ourselves now going into the second round. Brandon Hanna does not have any challenges left after that round. Number two, Mark, how do the rules work? Oh, it's the wheel round, Christian. You don't really have to worry about this wheel. I mean, you know your inner geekdom categories, but I'll give you the rules just in case. Once we do settle on a slice after a spin of that magnificent electronic wheel complete with sound effects, you're going to be asked five questions from said genre. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. And to recap, Brandon Hanna out of challenges. Alex Damon still has his left to be used by Roxy Stryer if she wishes. And we also have three JTE rules apiece for each competitor. All right, Brandon, you are the uh, higher, let me see, drop Alex out here too. You are the higher ranked competitor. Would you choose to go first or would you like to go second? Let me uh, consult with my manager. I would like to spin first. All right, so Brandon and Hannah, you have the opportunity to spin. You will have your 60 seconds to contemplate once you hit it. If you want to spin or stay away, here is the spin. I mean, look, Christian, so we want about the kid. He's saving us time. Yeah, absolutely. The well, dog gets blocked 15 seconds earlier. Well, I think oh, it's first choice. choice. Choice there. Spinner's choice. So where would you like to go, Brandon? I would like to go to Star Trek. Star Trek is where we're going to go here. Star Trek. All right. We're going to bring in Alex the Demon Damon. Um, all right. So actually, you know what, Roxy, you do have 60 seconds to con to talk to your competitor in between rounds starting now. Alex, how are you feeling? Good. I'm, I'm happy. You're looking amazing. He got Spinner's Choice uh, good. He's going to need it to even give you a fight. Uh, it's not going to really make a difference, though, because you see the way he makes his bed half butt. So that's how he's going to do everything in his life. Uh, I'm really excited with the way you're playing. That was the weakest challenge I've ever seen maybe in Schmodown history. What a weak week. That was ridiculous. Uh, I don't think anybody gave it a second thought, but it was cute of you guys, Christian and Mark, to really spend time, you know, really looking into that for him. Good job, Brandon. You fight for yourself. Good for you. Uh, Alex, you've got this. Period. End of sentence. You're amazing. And that shirt is awesome. In a geek thank you. Group. Yeah. All right. Well, Roxy Stryer, thank you very much. All right, gentlemen, let's get to the round. Mark, uh, Brandon Hanna. He chose Star Trek for his wheel spin. Yes, he did, Christian. And uh, unlike Alex's manager, I'm not going to judge him just based off of uh, how you make the bad. <laughs> All right. 
Brandon, your first question of five, number five in the world of Star Trek. Who plays Christopher Pike in Star Trek 2009 and Star Trek Into Darkness? Bruce Greenwood. Great actor, isn't he? Two points for Brandon Hanna. All right. Now he's got a two-point lead, and you can add to it by answering this next question. How many Star Trek films did Jonathan Frakes direct? Two. That is correct. It was First Contact and Insurrection. He was a cast member on The Next Generation, I believe. All right, Brandon, will you continue on? Now you have a four-point lead, adding to it, possibly. What is the name of the artifact that Kirk retrieves in Star Trek Beyond, which is revealed to be a bioweapon? The Abronath. Oh. Yeah, it sounds intimidating, and it is. Two more points. He's perfect so far, Christian. And now we get to the penultimate question in the world of Star Trek for Brandon Hanna. Brandon, what is the name of the Vulcan ritual to purge all emotions? Kalinar. Wow. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. He's right. All right, now we move to your final question, and this is for a perfect round number two without even the aid of multiple choice. Hitman in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Who plays the Vulcan Lieutenant Valeris? Kim Cattrall. From wow. Sex in the City, Christian, a perfect round number two. That challenge did not phase him at all. Well, the challenge didn't, he hit Spinner's Choice, and he picked Star Trek, and it worked out for him because he sees himself up eight points. All right, Brandon, going to drop you out there, too. Roxy's going to come back in. Roxy, you got another 60 seconds here to talk to your competitor before the spin. Here you go. I still think he's lame. Uh, Alex, don't let that get to you. You know exactly what to do. Take your time. Uh, we still have a challenge if we need it. You still got your JTEs. This is your game to win. Just as zen as you are right now, stay that way. No matter what you spin, no matter what you spin, you've got this. Um, so I, I, there's not a any doubt in my mind, and I feel really confident going into this. You did a great job round one putting yourself in a perfect position. Great. All right. So let's get that wheel up there. And all right. So here's the first spin. Here you go. Ten point hole, Christian. But uh, Alex Damon has proven he can crawl out of these before. Nothing to crawl out of. He's a champion. No, that's so we already hit Star Trek, so you'll get a sec you get a free spin. Go ahead and spin that baby Love again. A good free spin. It's looking like Middle mm -hmm. Earth. Christian, mm -hmm. he quoted it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll stay. Yeah, all right, he's gonna stay. Middle Earth it is. All right. So Love Middle Earth. Feeling <laughs> this one. All right, right Rox, gonna put you there. Bring in whoop. So let's see again. Let's make sure. Oops. <laughs> All right. All right. So Middle Earth it is. You're going to have five questions in the realm of Middle Earth, my friend. Here is the question. All right, Alex, first one. In Lord of the Rings, who said, 300 lives of men, I have walked this earth, and now I have no time? Gandalf the White. Yes, for two points. All right. Question two, in The Hobbit, who plays the dwarf Dwaylin, or D Dwaylin in The Hobbit trilogy? Graham McTavish. Yes. All right, question three. In Return of the King, what is the name of the ruined city that Faramir defends? Osgiliath. Yes, it is. All right, here is the fourth question. Who said to Bilbo, in the Hobbit, who said to Bilbo, I am sorry for doubting you in an unexpected journey? Thorin. Yes, for two more points, Alex Damon. Hi, Brandon Hanna here with this next correct answer, Christian. He can tie it up. This is the fifth question. All right. In her conversation with Aragorn, Eowyn states she fears neither death nor pain, but she does fear what? A cage. For two more points, Alex Gaiman. Unbelievable round there. 18, 18. Lord of the Rings for the strength hits it. Brandon Hanna, Star Trek. They're both tied up going into round number three. Mark, how does it go? 
They look unflappable too, Christian, as we enter into round number three. It's the round that uh, might determine the outcome of the match, unless we go to sudden death overtime, which is certainly in play. Here's how round number three works. Each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. This is inner geekdom, so your numbers may range from 1 to 15. Need three numbers from each of you. Each number corresponds to a different corner of inner geekdom, movie, trivia, schmodown, goodness. Your first question's worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. And your last one is worth five huge points. Uh, there's no penalty for missing a question. And there is no stealing in round number three. Each competitor has retained all three usages of their JTE rule. And Alex Damon also has that one challenge still left in the back of his pocket. So, uh, Christian, they're tied. They're both thinking about their lucky numbers. Who's going to go first? Uh, Brandon Hanna is still the higher ranked competitor with the tie game. Brandon, you can choose your three numbers, please. Go ahead. Four, eight, and 15. Four, eight, and 15 for Hanna and for Alex Damon, please. Three, six, and nine. Three, six, and nine. All right, we're going to bring Roxy in, who's going to be able to talk to Alex for 60 seconds. At, uh, at Roxy, go ahead. I love those numbers. I think those are the best numbers on the entire planet. Uh, I'm so impressed. I clapped so hard, I stabbed myself in the eye, Alex. That's really what just happened. You are incredible. Uh, this is where Brandon goes down and his talk turns super cheap right now. You've got this. I know you do. You, this is yours to win. You want to be double belted. Now is the time to make sure you're going to be double belted. Stay calm, stay focused. Remember, you've got your JTEs. Uh, you, I, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And ow, my eye. Oh, thank you, Roxy Stryer. Well, take care of your eye. Wow. All right, Alex, we're going to start with you in order to take your lead here and bounce it to Hannah. You have question number three is what you chose. Category three, excuse me. Category three. And you chose Marvel films. All right, here you go. Who played the title character in 2004's The Punisher? Tom Jane. Tom Jane is correct. All right. So two points for Alex. Next. So now we are to Brandon Hanna, Mark, who chose category number four, Mark. Yes, he did, Christian. And the number of Jim Harbaugh when he was playing corresponds to... The category of weapons, technology, vehicles, and magical objects. It's a smorgasbord. Uh, Brandon, your question for two points and to tie Alex Damon. What type of weapon does Huntress use to commit vigilante murders in Birds of Prey? That'd be a crossbow. It would be a crossbow. Christian, we're tied back to you. All right, so back and forth we go. Alex Damon chose category six. Category six, DC movies, DC movies. Here is your question, Alex. In Superman the movie, what is the name of Lex Luthor's henchwoman? Five, four. Repeat. First one. In Superman the movie, what is the name of Lex Luthor's henchwoman? Five. M Miss Havisham. Looking for Miss Tessmacher! <laughs> Miss Tessmacher. Well done, Christian. Thank you. Uh, that's the one. When I see a question like that, I wish I was still competing. I would have gotten that. One. Sure, you do. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we find ourselves in a position where Brandon Hanna can take the lead here and force Alex Damon to hit his five if he gets this question right. Mark, he chose category number eight. Yes, he did. And Steve Young's number is the Wizarding World. Okay, Brandon, so you've selected the Wizarding World, and this will give you a three-point advantage over Alex Damon. And your question. After Harry, Ron, and Hermione got past Fluffy, what was the plant creature they were caught in called? Devil's Snare. Doesn't sound pleasant, but he's correct. Three points and a three-point lead goes to Brandon Hanna for the moment. All right, so Brandon Hanna has put himself in the position to win here. If Alex Damon hits his five-pointer, then he's going to force Hannah to hit his five. If he misses, 
Brandon Hanna will be advancing to the semifinals. Alex chose category number nine. Category number nine. <laughs> you got Star Wars. <laughs> category number nine. You chose Star Wars. Unbelievable. All right, here you go. Which prequel character was played by Hugh Corshi? Captain Korsh Panaka. That is correct. For five points, Alex Damon hits it, forces Brandon Hanna to win the game here. He has a five-pointer. If he hits the five-pointer, he wins. However, if he misses, then Alex Damon will make it into the semifinals. Mark, Brandon Hanna chose category 15. Category 15 for his five-pointer. Yes, he did, Christian. Always frustrating when your opponent misses a question in round number three, but yet they still force you to answer all your questions. So we are here now, and Brandon Hanna, it's do or die. Hit the shot or don't. The MCU is your five-point question category, Mr. Hitman. And your question. For the win and to advance in the tournament, what Earth does Mysterio claim to be from in Spider-Man Far From Home? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. I Second. can do that. First this one. In the MCU, what Earth does Mysterio claim to be from in Spider-Man Far From Home? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Second one. All right, this is in the MCU. What Earth does Mysterio claim to be from in Spider-Man Far From Home? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Last one, Brandon, please have your hands up, please. All right, in the MCU. What Earth does Mysterio claim to be from in Spider-Man Far From Home? Earth 563. And your winner, advancing into the next round, Alex the Demon! Demon! The answer was 833. 8.33, Alex Damon does it. He advances, Brandon, just gonna have to put you in the uh, waiting room at the moment. Great match, Brandon, and bringing in Rocky Stryer. What a match, what a match. It looked like he was in trouble there, Roxy. He no, had three and oh, no. three and oh, a big, a big three points there for the rock stars as Alex Damon makes it to the next round of the tournament. He's never in trouble because he always stays calm and cool. And uh, nobody likes Eve Tessmacher anyway, not even a DC fan. So I'm glad that you forgot about her. Let her slip your mind. I was uh, about to say Otis and he said, woman. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, she's the henchwoman that could be forgotten in this. You, Alex, you are incredible. Um, you've gotten some really bad luck in terms of numbers that you've pulled in the past. So it was about time that you pulled Star Wars with that <laughs> five pointer. About time you were owed that. And uh, you know, I'm I'm glad we can hear Brandon Hanna stop talking now. Just go, go be quiet for just a minute. You're you played very well, but Alex Damon is a champion. And he proved that today. Well, that's the thing, Alex. So I mean, regardless of the way Hannah has been talking, he played phenomenally. I mean, he played great. He was he had that Star Trek. He looked like he, yeah. he, he hit that two pretty easy. He hit the three. It looked like it was going to be over. But the five pointer, and he came close. He came close with that five pointer there. Did you, were you nervous that he was maybe stalling and that he knew the answer? Of course, of course, I was nervous. I mean, yeah, he played so well. I was so impressed by that Star Trek round. I knew that this was pretty much how this was going to go. I mean, 
Uh, I watched back through his matches, and we seemed just very neck and neck as I played along. So uh, he is a great competitor. As far as I'm concerned, he he does back up all of the smack talk that he throws out there. I mean, he he is very good. All right, um, okay. Usually I'm known for asking an insightful post-match question, but in this scenario, I just have to ask, Roxy, how do you clap so hard you hurt your eye? Can you take us through the physics of that? <laughs> Uh, if you guys, I wish you could see me because I get up. I know Christian, you can see me in the waiting room. I get up and I'm clapping, I'm flapping, and it just was a little too close. Um, and I, I clapped into, I was very focused on the game and uh, the excitement, and I clapped and I think I like caught an eyelash. Uh, Alex, you do weird things to me, man. You make me, you make my eye hurt. Oh, uh, I was doing the same thing when when I'm watching Molly's matches on Twitch. I'm pacing yeah. the room. I'm, I'm, I get. It. Get you it. know, so yeah. I just went, it, it went left and I went right. And, you know, if I'm going to injure myself, at least we're champions because well, it's a much better injury feeling right now. Roxy, Alex has gotten you the majority of your points this year. Um, it was funny because people were wondering when you chose him, like, well, yeah, he's a Star Wars champion, but how often is he going to play? He hasn't gotten any points in Star Wars. All the points have come. And only because he hasn't played. No, because no, he hasn't no, played. No, absolutely, but I'm just saying the fact that who would have thought that all the points that Alex Damon was racking up has been in the inner geekdom division? Um, how confident are you with his chances to win this whole thing? Alex Damon is a, the biggest joy to manage. Uh, he is like the light of my life. I I believe in him wholeheartedly, and we see what he does between every single match. So I don't think anybody can doubt him. He wears a belt for a reason. He knows what it takes to be a champion. And I think that I'm fully confident that he's going to be able to take this all the way. Look what he's done so far and how he grows every time. That's two perfect round twos in a row. Two perfect round twos in a row. I mean, come on, that's crazy. And our opponent today had to spin spinner's choice and still couldn't hold up. So... I'm sorry. You got to use this time to learn to make your bed. Those wrinkles were driving me mad. Uh, and Alex, you are just such, I said it before we started, but you're such a stud in all the ways. Like, thank you for making my job as easy as possible because you are so incredible at your job. All right. So listen, thank you to both Roxy Stryer, Alex, the demon, Damon, congratulations on the victory. Hard fought, well-earned battle here between yourself and Brandon, the hitman, Hannah. Roxy, congratulations to the rock stars. This is a big victory. I know you guys were, were counting on it. So We need it, and Alex always pulls through when we need him to. So thank you to Alex and rock on. All right. Thank you to the demon and to Roxy. All right. Now we're going to bring in just Brandon, the hitman, Hannah. I got to start with this. Do you think it was a mistake to let Ken go? Do you think you needed a manager? Maybe you wouldn't have made that challenge in the first round. Uh, I mean, it was a hell of a match, man. I th what happened? I don't regret a thing, and I don't regret that challenge at all. I still don't think Green Hornet is an inner geek to movie. It doesn't belong in this division. And, you know, maybe it's about time I really give uh, the question writers a piece of my mind. I'm not going to be one of those jerks that makes a stink about the way a question's worded or, you know, maybe a question is unfair, but specifically that film doesn't belong. And, you know, I'll give it to Alex Damon. He spun his biggest strength in round two, spun his other biggest strength for uh, his five pointer. And that's what it took to beat me, him getting his biggest strengths where it counts. Now I, I had a weak round one and that cost me the match and it happens. But, I mean, it's it's funny that you, I keep hearing you guys talk and talk and talk about how much I love to talk. And I'm just, I'm just here to speak the truth, the truth that all of you need to hear, all the fans at home need to hear. You think, you think I talk too much? Roxy talks way too much. Somebody really needs to shut her up. I mean, how many times are you going to tell me about my wrinkles in my bed? That's really good smack talk. Keep going with that. I mean, Roxy, just leave the trash talk to me and you just keep trying to blow smoke up your player's skirts and I'll be back. Wow. Um, okay. So my, my question to you, Brandon is like, like these kind of movies that we're asking questions about, they're littered with stories of someone who was a villain and then saw the light maybe saw that there was a different path that they could walk down. 
Do you think that this loss puts you at that crossroads where you might consider another option, another attitude to bring to the schmo down? Not at all. You know, I, I recently spoke to my faction mate, Warfather. Great guy, a little too optimistic for my taste, but a great guy. And he said, we're all the heroes of our own story. And of, of course, I'm the hero of my story. And eventually, sooner or later, all you idiots at home are going to wise up and realize that I'm the hero of your story as well, of the schmodown. Because like I said, I preach the truth. And sooner or later, you're going to get tired of not listening. And you're going to hear what I have to say, because I'm far from done. All right. Well, Brandon, the hitman, Hannah, uh, regardless, it was a hell of a match. It was a good fight. Um, there's always, uh, who knows, we will see in singles. I don't know what's to, what to expect with everything going on. I think you and Ken need to have a talk. But regardless, thank you for joining us here today. Really appreciate it. All right, Brandon Hannah, Mark, that was a battle. That was a, a quarterfinal match. Alex, Damon, I mean, who could beat this guy? I mean, he's 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 playing an inner geekdom and he's three and zero. In Star Wars, he hasn't lost a match in in like I don't know two or three years or whatever it might be. And even then, who knows? The guy the guy is is just on another level. And now he has some time to prepare for his next match. That's scary. That is yeah. scary. I mean, Christian, what we just witnessed, sure, it's a schmodown. It's not even for the championship. It felt like we were witnessing the Battle of Evermore. There were demons. There were angels. They were clashing. They were throwing haymakers back and forth. Two perfect round twos. An amazing display of a wealth of knowledge from a variety of categories. And it just ends up shaking out with Alex Damon today. I, I think that Brandon is not only firmly entrenched in who he has become. I don't see anybody else lifting him out of that. If anything, Christian, I sense a deeper decision sent into darkness madness but possibly maybe on the other side of that is a championship in his future this kid's not going anywhere i agree with you here's the thing with brandon hannah is that even though this is a loss this is a different loss from than when he lost to chandrew those two times he was defeated he was beaten and you could see it in his eyes this brandon hannah that lost here today said okay you knocked me down we'll wait because i'm gonna be here when you come back around, pal, because because of this competition happening in the inner geekdom, there's more and more people. And Hannah is dangerous. Hannah showed. Look at what he did in that Star Trek round. It was it was like lights out. He proved in this tournament already, even though he went one and one in the tournament, he proved that he is one of the elite competitors. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is something that is it's going to be an ongoing debate. And since the beginning of time, or at least the Schmodown, it's which kind of side are you letting back your your attitude, your feel, for lack of a better word? Is it the side of light? Is it the side of darkness? And Christian, as Alex Damon pointed out in his pre-show interview, that we see that in these kind of films where it's like the path that guides you. What is your destiny? We're seeing two very different has but possibly to the same destiny but for alex damon it's a little more immediate because he's got a huge match coming up and i'm pretty sure his manager needs to be restrained from hurting herself further during the next contest all right so the stage is set the inner geekdom tournament it's a chuglin along as mark ellis would say and what a match here today. Thank you to Mark Ellis. Thank you to all of you guys. Make sure, if you haven't already, make sure you're going on over to twitch.tv slash the Schmodown. Become either a follower or a subscriber over there today. And the Inner Geekdom Tournament, you can listen to it on Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe here on YouTube. Make sure you're commenting. Click a like. Leaving a comment here today would be very, very important to the show. If you can, let's get us to 600 comments today. That's the challenge. See if you can do it. Thank you to Mark Ellis. Thank you to Brandon Hanna and to Alex Damon, Roxy Stryer, Ken Nabsock. And we will see you next time.